Mr. Dick. Yes, Cody. I can't help noticing that your title says Lesson 6, Projectile Motion Part 2. I don't really recall a Projectile Motion Part 1. Maybe when I was typing them this summer, Mr. Dewick got the titles mixed up, and really we should be doing that, please. Lesson 5, Projectile Motion Part 1. Let's call it that, please. And then tomorrow we'll do Lesson 5, which is actually going to be Lesson 6 next class. What's a projectile? A projectile is an object in free fall. Dropping something is technically a projectile, but we did do that last year. We did free fall. What we're going to add this year is sideways motion to the projectile. Uh, but we're going to be in our magic physics world. We're going to ignore air resistance. Tennis balls have a fair bit of air resistance when they get going really fast. Any of you that play tennis know you can put a pretty nasty curve on these things with a slice. Baseballs are a little better. The cross balls are really nice, not much air resistance. Or a Pick a solid metal sphere. That's what we're kind of using in our minds mathematically. But we'll be demoing often with stuff that has air resistance. We're going to ignore the air resistance to make the math easy. And what we want you to realize is there are two things going on with any projectile. A projectile is traveling in two directions. It's traveling horizontally. Yes, you saw it. But also, it's traveling vertically, which you were probably able to see better because it was coming straight towards you, but you saw it go up and go back down and come towards you. But the only way you could tell it was coming towards you was because it was getting bigger in your eyes. If you were really far away, you wouldn't have been able to tell. Thank you for avoiding the tablet, by the way. That was my main concern. B? Relax. Relax. Sorry for the interruptions, those of you that are online. A projectile is launched through the air, any object that's launched through the air, if we ignore air resistance. However, we have to get rid of some misconceptions. And this is the first one. This comes from the fact that you folks have watched cartoons. Example one says this. A mass is held at shoulder level, and it's fired horizontally. Which curve best shows the path it follows to the ground? Path A, straight down. Path B, path C, it goes straight for a bit and then goes straight down. Path D, it goes straight and then drops straight down. And once again, like always, you're going to vote. How high you hold your hand up is how certain you are of the answer. I'm positive. I'm pretty sure. I'm only voting because Mr. Duick's keeping track of the faces, and if I don't vote, he'll make fun of me. Okay? So you're ready. Who says path A? Who says path B? Who says path C? Who says path D? So we're about split between C and D for the most part. So you can either defend your choice or attack someone else's choice. Attack or defend. Who's right or who's wrong? Convince me. Carson. C, C is because of cartoon physics. As soon as you fire, and C is because you guys understand how rifles work because the movies get it wrong. If you're firing a rifle, for example, the split second it leaves the barrel, it's dropping, it's falling. It doesn't travel straight for a while because it's like going so fast that gravity doesn't affect it. Some, that's not how it works. Okay? And again, we're not talking about something like a Frisbee, which has a different type of aerodynamics with the air resistance. We're talking about nice, round, aerodynamic projectiles. Yeah, the correct answer here is B. You want to test that, you say? Fair enough. So right now, I'm going to aim this for Spencer's pen. This is about the head level, and it's about the same, it's about horizontal. Now, Spencer, behind you, there's a little chair. Can you grab that chair for protection, please? I wouldn't want you to accidentally get hit. If B, sorry, if C is correct, this should also travel pretty much straight at the same height that, that leaves the projectile. Now, I'm missing this. But you can see it dropped about, just in that short time, about that much. It was in free fall. See, the shelf is, what, about, just above his elbow, as a matter of fact, if he dropped over about the much. That was that part of the, the map was good. The map was good. 
as soon as a projectile is launched, as soon as it's launched, it's accelerating at negative 9.8 meters per second squared down. So defend your answer. Have I convinced you? Then we're not going to, well. A equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared down immediately. Do they still show the old uh, Coyote Roadrunner cartoons? Did you grow up with Those are the worst ones because he always runs off the cliff. He hovers there for a while until he figures out that he's in free fall, and then he's in free fall, right? It's Roadrunner physics, bad physics. Example two. Suppose I had two identical objects. Suppose I took my Nerf dart gun and I held it horizontal, and I also just held a Nerf dart in my other hand, and I dropped this dart at the same time as I pulled the trigger. What would happen? Which would hit the ground first? Object one, since it has a more direct path. Object two, since it's moving faster than object one. Or C, they both hit at the same time. What do you think? Tyson. See, I'm not sure what you, sorry? See, convince me. If I summarize Tyson's argument, it's the answer is C because C is the right answer. I'm going to go, go a little more detailed than that. I know. Wonderfully. I'm going to reference that. Thank you for beating me to the punch, Captain Obvious. Um, this is the key idea behind projectiles, Shannon. What we're going to do from now on, whenever we think about a projectile, we're going to think of it as having two components, horizontal and vertical. And vertically, all projectiles fall at the same time. And yes, Mythbusters did a lovely episode where they took a rifle in a long, long warehouse and they fired the rifle and they measured where the bullet landed. And then they redid that, but they put a camera right where the bullet had landed and put another bullet just hovering on a magnet at the same height as the rifle so that when you pulled the trigger, the magnet turned off and the bullet from the magnet would drop as the rifle bullet was fired, and sure enough, they hit the ground. I think it was in about 0.2 of each, 0 0.002 of each other. There is some air resistance in the real life world that comes into effect. But all objects fall in free fall at the same rate. That's what Galileo came up with. So the answer here is going to be they both hit at the same time. There is kind of, did Mr. Camozzi have that little demo thingy? Uh, where it fires the ball and drops the ball. I've tried that, and I can never get it to work, so I'm not, I didn't bother getting it out this morning. It, I can never get it level, and yeah, I got a different demo to show you guys later. Okay? That's going to be really handy then, because anytime we launch something horizontally off a cliff, mathematically, Alexis, we're going to pretend it's just falling straight down for a big chunk of it, and it'll give us lots of ways to analyze it. What this important demonstration shows us is that the horizontal and the vertical motions or components of a projectile are independent of each other. In fact, when we solve a projectile question, Ashley, we're going to draw a line down the middle of the page. I'm going to call one side horizontal. I'm going to call one side vertical. I'm going to write down two things right away always. We'll talk about what those two things are. And then I'm going to just ask, what information do I have? That's going to determine whether I solve or analyze this projectile horizontally or vertically. If you remember the Nerf dart gun that I shot, Justin, if you had had a strobe light that flashed every second or every tenth of a second, and you've been able to take a picture every tenth of a second. I did find a great picture online, but when I it was an actual photo strobe. But when I put it into this document and tried photocopying it, it just became one of those big smear black diagrams. It didn't, it didn't translate from the internet. So I found this one, which is a computer graphics one. If you look at any projectile and you take a picture, let's say every tenth of a second, you'll find that the horizontal distance it travels is constant but the vertical distance that it travels is increasing. What this really means is 
Now, my abbreviation for vertical velocity is VY. VY is negative increasing. You know what I mean by negative increasing? Which way is it increasing and in what direction? Down. I just don't feel like right. Negative. Because the vertical acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We all remember that number from last year. G, we called it. But the horizontal velocity, if we ignore air resistance, and we're going to, the horizontal velocity, and I'm going to call that Ashley VX, is constant. Your horizontal acceleration is zero. What that means, Cody, is if I was on a skateboard, or I'm just going to walk at a constant speed, and I throw something straight up, It'll come right back down to my hand. Even though I'm moving forward, it won't land behind me or in front of me. It's going to keep moving at exactly the same speed that I'm moving at. The horizontal velocity is constant. There's a wonderful demo. We have a cheap version of a little cart that you can roll, and it fires a little ball in the air. It's supposed to come straight down again. Again, I've never been able to get that one to work out worth a dime. I have a better version right now. It's a video. Put your pencils down, please. Much better equipment than I have. Oh, I would love to own some of that stuff, but that's okay. They're MIT. They got a budget. Turn the page. Spencer, catch. And back. Now, let's suppose one-third of the way towards me, we froze time and we made the ball just freeze for a split second. What are the forces acting on that ball? Get the obvious ones. Gravity. What else? I can't hear you. Is Spencer still touching it? That he can't possibly be exerting a force on it. What are the forces acting on the ball? And the answer is, if we're ignoring air resistance, only gravity. Only gravity. What direction does gravity act in? down. So the reason Vx, the horizontal, is constant and Vy, the vertical, is changing is, did I turn the video back on? I think I did. Yes, I did. Good. Only one force, gravity. And gravity is vertical. Gravity can't possibly make it go faster sideways. That bugs people because they're like, Tyson suggested, it's moving. There has to be a force. No, no, if it's at a constant speed, Newton's first law said an object can continue moving at a constant speed and no force is acting on it. And again, in real life, air resistance is technically slowing it down a bit. So let's pretend we're in a vacuum or on the moon. Example four. Consider this stop action picture says, at each point along the path, indicate the velocity components. Let's do vertical velocities first. So we're going to launch something up at an angle. Okay. Right when I pull the trigger, that projectile, that Nerf dart, is moving horizontally and vertically. And the vertical component is at its biggest. You know how I know? Because on the way up, what happens to projectiles vertical speed on the way up? Slows down. So Cody, if I was going to draw the vertical component right here, it would be a shorter arrow than this one. Oh, and at the very, very top, for a split second, Cody, what's the vertical component? Great question. For a split second, the vertical component is zero. And then on the way down, it's getting bigger but negative. And not only that, if we start and end at the same height, you know what you can tell me about the final vertical speed? It's exactly the same as the initial vertical speed, but negative. Ashley, if it went up at 20 meters per second, it's coming back down at 20 meters per second. If I ignore air 
assistance. What about the horizontal velocity? What about the horizontal velocity? Well, it turns out the horizontal velocity is constant, is constant, is constant, is constant. It's a vector arrow the same length as the original. That was that video demo that we just showed you. When you're from a cliff, it gets a bit trickier. And that's going to be the toughest questions we're going to do in this unit. Launching from a cliff at an angle. It says indicate velocity components in the stop action picture and then fill in the key facts. At the top, what do I know? Cody, I know that Vy is zero. Now, I would break this projectile into Vx and Vy initial. Spencer, why did I put an initial on the Vy, but I didn't put an initial on the Vx? Why would I have done that? I knew I could count on you, because Vx isn't changing. So why would I put an initial? Because initial is the same as final. Horizontally isn't going to change. Vertically is going to change. In fact, you know what? When you're even with launch, the vertical velocity is going to be negative, the initial vertical velocity. When it gets back to the same height, it's traveling at the same speed as it started. But now it continues to fall. So Kirsten, if it continues to fall, what's going to happen to the vertical velocity? If it continues to fall, what's going to happen to its vertical velocity? Is it going to slow down or speed up? Oh, yeah, why? Gravity. It's got a force acting on it. Okay? So the final vertical velocity would probably look something like that. Oh, and if I add my horizontal that it's been traveling the whole time, the actual impact velocity would be that vector right there. If you add Vy final plus Vx tip to tail, there is your impact velocity, magnitude, and direction. Now the good news here is, hey, it's right angle triangles, so the trig isn't too bad. Horizontal speed is blank because blank. Vertical speed is blank because blank. Horizontal speed is constant. Vertical speed is changing. Why is horizontal speed constant? Because there's no horizontal acceleration. Why is that? Because there's no horizontal forces. Once Spencer lets the ball go, Tyson, he has no longer any impact on that projectile. Uh, vertical speed is changing. You know why? Because there is a vertical acceleration. And in fact, I know what it is exactly. How big is it? Yeah. Because Ay is negative 9.8. That's the acceleration. And Kirsten, which force is it that's providing the acceleration? You said it. Gravity. Yep. And then here's the final key. Vertical and horizontal motions are independent. What that means is they don't affect each other. Don't you dare put a 9.8 into a horizontal equation. Uh-uh. No, no. Turn the page. So the first type of projectile we're going to look at is launched horizontally from a cliff. So you're not launched from the ground, you're launched from a cliff, but you're not launched at an angle, you're launched horizontally. 
And here's a specific example. Our horizontal velocity is 20 meters per second, and the cliff is 50 meters high. Lovely diagram, and it says, fill in the appropriate chart. Now, if that chart wasn't there, I would create it. I would draw a line down the middle. And I would call it one side horizontal, and I would call it one side vertical. But they've already put the chart there for me. All right. Horizontally, these are the first two things I always fill out. The accelerations. What's the horizontal acceleration? It's a trick question. Zero. What's the vertical acceleration? It's not a trick question, but it's supposed to be an easy question. Negative 9.8. In fact, I usually do those before I do anything else. And I remember A for acceleration. A is the first letter of the alphabet. A, first thing I do, A, acceleration. Velocities. What's my initial horizontal velocity? Look at my diagram. How fast are we traveling horizontally the split second we leave the cliff? 20. In fact, I don't like the fact that they called it VI. I'm just going to call it VX because I suggest that it might be changing. It's not. You know how I know it's not? Because of that. Now, here's where we have to put our thinking caps on just a little bit. The split second I leave my cliff, what's my vertical velocity? Zero. You know why? Haven't started falling yet. That's only if we're firing something horizontally for a split second. Hasn't dropped yet. I know one more thing. What's my displacement vertically? I can get that from the diagram. I'll give you a hint. It's not 50. My distance is 50. What's my displacement? It's not 50. Why is it negative 50? Am I ending up above from where I started or below from where I started? Cassidy, how many different quantities do I know in my horizontal? How many do I know in my vertical? Where do you think I'm going to start solving stuff then? I got more stuff to work with in the vertical. Okay? Example 7 says, use the values of example 5, I think it means example 6. Yes. Whoops. To find the flight time and the range of the projectile. So really quickly, I'm just going to rewrite these values. It was 20, 0, 0, negative 9.8, and negative 50. What do they want me to find first here? To find the what? Flight time. Um, I only have two things. I can't find T from here. Ah, but I have three things. I think I can find T from here. So from your formula sheet, can you find me an equation that has V, I, A, D, and T in it? Which one? VF equals VI plus AT? Nope, I don't know VF. VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD? No, I don't know VF. Alex, which one? Yeah, the old favorite. D is equal to VIT plus 1 half AT squared. Oh, and you know what? Alex, why can I do this? Why can I do that? Vertically, VI is 0, which makes this an even easier equation to solve. Otherwise, this would be a quadratic, and I'm having to pull out the quadratic formula. Yeah. Now, my equation is actually just D equals AT squared over 2. Andrew, the over 2 came from. It's a half. I can get the T by itself pretty easy. Move the 2 to the top. Right, Rob? Move the A to the bottom. Right? And how to get rid of a squared square root. In fact, I'm going to argue that T is going to be the square root of 2D over A. And now it's plug and chug. T is equal to the square root of 2 times negative 50 all over negative 9.8.
By the way, remember when I said, what's the vertical distance? And some of you said 50. If you didn't realize below Cody means negative, if you missed that, you'd catch it here. Because if you didn't have a negative there, you'd be trying to take the square root of a negative and your calculator would bark at you. And you'd go, something's wrong. But here, I have a negative divided by a negative. 2 times 50 is 100 divided by 9.8. It's going to be a little bit bigger than 10, uh, 3.1 or 3.2. 3.2, I'm going to, now I'm guessing, 3.23-ish, what, what is it? Sorry? 3.19, ah, close. 3.19 Alex units. Careful. Look at the variable, come on, don't let me down here. 3.19 seconds. I'll keep the longer number on my calculator because I'm probably going to use that. But the two or three sig figs, 2.19 seconds. So how long was it in free fall vertically for? Answer, Alex. Not this Alex, not that Alex, but this Alex. How long was it in free fall for? 3.19 seconds. Alex, how long was it moving sideways for? That's the beauty. See, now I have time. Now, boom, right away I can write the same time over here because the vertical time of flight has to be the horizontal time of flight. Ashley, why is that so helpful? How many different quantities do I have now in my horizontal section, Cassidy? And now I can work with th any three. I can find the fourth. But we don't have any formulas that only have two and find the third. So what else did they, what was the second thing? Flight time and the range. What's the range? It's a new vocabulary word. Look at your diagram. What's the range? Yeah. In fact, you know how I abbreviate range? DX instead of DY. DX equals. So I'm looking for an equation that has VI, A, T and D in it. Is there one? What? Oh, same one? Wow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What can I cross out? Oh, I like that. Why? Because horizontally, the acceleration is what, Simran? Woohoo! Because now this is really plug and chug. Uh, the horizontal distance, the range, is going to be VI. Which VI? Well, what letter is right there? Horizontal. The range, 20, times the time, 3.19. 20 times 3 is 60. 60, just below 64. I'm going to say 63.9, 63.8. You know what? It probably depends whether you use 3.19 or the full T value that's on your calculator. Full one is 0.9, then I'm going to go with that one because that's what I was doing in my head. Yeah, right. Getting old, so I'm trying to keep the brain active. Trying to get back to doing some arithmetic in my head. I had a, a college prof. My physics prof was amazing. He would get four or five sig figs with trig functions and cube roots, but he had grown up without a calculator. And growing up with a calculator, you learn lots of shortcuts just as a matter of survival because, oh, you don't have to be looking stuff up all the time. Turn the page. So we just did horizontally off a cliff. Key idea, horizontally, Vx is your velocity. Vy initial is zero. What if we're launching from the ground? Well, horizontally from the ground would be boring because it hit the ground right away. We're going to at an angle from the ground. What's the velocity of this particular projectile? 100. At what angle, Shannon? 35 degrees. We are never going to use that 100 to actually calculate stuff. We're only going to use that 100 in the very first step. 
and our very first step, as soon as they give me a projectile at an angle, my very first step is to break it into the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity. Hey Cassidy, how come I didn't put an I right there? Sorry, how come I didn't put an I right there? It's never changing. Yeah, that one is. Always want to remind myself. And let's do a little bit of trig. Cassidy, this VX opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. This 100. Which trig function? Uh, yeah, Oz, right? Uh, oh, cos, yeah. So if I hear you correctly, cos of 35 equals VX over 100. What's VX? Cos of 30 is 0.86, so that'd be 86. Cos of 35, 83, 82-ish? I don't know. Give or take. 81.9? That was a fluke. That I won't take credit for. Cassidy did so good. Uh, opposite of Jason Hypotenuse. Which trig function? In fact, call me silly. Uh, I think it would be this same equation, but instead of cos, what would be there? Uh, in fact, the work would be uh, Vx uh, 100 times uh, sine. Oh, I'm not going to write that. Well, okay, fine, I will. I saw some of you go glazed here. Sine 35 equals Vy times 100. Justin, what'd you get? 57.4? Is he right? I will use these. I will never use the 100 for the rest of this question. It will not. Now, what was VY? Which big function found VY? Sine. VY was sine. VY was sine. It would be great if there was some really dumb, easy way that I could just maybe memorize that VY was sine. If I was a good teacher, I'm sure I could come up with something, but I got nothing for you. By the way, you don't have to memorize that because it takes all of one second to derive but you'll be doing it so often if you're looking for a dumb way to memorize it. There it is. You ready? Now let's analyze this projectile. We're going to break it up into horizontal and vertical, and as soon as I break it up into horizontal and vertical, I say A is what? A is what? Horizontally, A is? Too slow. Horizontally, A is? Yes. Vertically, A is? The other reason I like writing that down right away, even before I even hardly read the question, is my question's no longer blank. I feel better. I've written something. My stress level's gone down. Oh, I know a couple of more things. What's Vx? Eighty one point nine. What's Vy? Initial, 57.4. And then there is one more thing that I know which can come in handy. I know my displacement vertically. How high was I when I started? Zero. How high was I when I finished? Zero. What's my vertical displacement? Vertically, how far have we traveled mathematically? This sometimes comes in handy. Uh, only works, Tyson, from ground to ground. Not from ground to cliff. Not from ground to cliff. Only from ground to ground. Example 9 wants us to solve or analyze the projectile. So for the projectile in question 8, it says 
solve for the time to talk. Let's quickly fill in the stuff we just had. We said A was 0, A was negative 9.8, A was 81.9, A was, uh, sorry, A, V was, and V was 57.4, and what does part A ask us? Time to the? What does it want us to find? Time to the top. What do you think? Is that vertical or horizontal? The word top, what would that suggest to you, Lucian? So I'm going to solve the rest of it, part A, here. Vertical. OK. How many pieces of information do I have right now, Hisham, under vertical? Not enough. OK, at the top, is there anything else I know at the top? Oh, there was something, actually. I think Cody pointed it out earlier. At the top, <gasps> what? What's zero? I got to be fussy. Vy final is zero at the top. Hisham, now how many things do I know? That's enough to find a fourth. So if I want to find time, I'm looking for an equation that has A, Vi, Vf, and T in it. Oh, yeah, find it. And do me a favor, when you find it, read it to me getting the T by itself in your head. Cause... Yeah, it's that one. Go for it. Right, via equals vi plus at, and rewrite it. By the way, if you haven't clued in, you'll find for most lessons, it's helpful to have your formula sheet in front of you. That's why I gave you two, one for the test and one to just use your uh, Vf, zero, minus vi, 57.4. All over negative 9.8. Am I going to get a negative? Oh, no, no. The top will be negative as well as the bottom. I'll get a positive time. Whew. What's the time of flight? Uh, 0 minus 57 is negative 57.4 divided by negative 9.8. Negative 9.8 is close to 10. It's going to be close to negative. It's going to be close to 5.7. A little bigger than 5 points. 5, I'm going to go 5, 9. That's a guess. 5.86, okay. I'm on a roll. And I'm not even cheating. Often if I've done the lesson earlier, I can remember the answer. But this time I can't. Time of flight, 5.86 seconds. Check. No, that's not time of flight. That's time to top. B wants the time of flight. How can I find B? Fairly easily, actually. Just Okay, now that only works because we're starting on the ground and ending up on the, on the ground. If we went from a cliff to the ground, you can't times by two because going up is going to be shorter than going down. So make sure you don't just say, oh, I double it. No. But this one, absolutely. 5.86 times 2 is going to be 10 plus 11.72. Uh, 11 uh, 11 that's what I said, 11.71. 11.7 because that's a two or three sig figs. Ha. I was right. Alex, what's C asking? What's part C, what's C want us to find? Ah, what's the Oh, that's, we said another uh, DX. Now I'm going to walk over here to horizontal. But you know what? Before I write down DX, what did I just figure out in B? Part B, what did I just figure out, Alex? Ah, that means that's also the time of flight here, because whatever it was traveling vertically, that's how far it was traveling horizontally. And now I can try and find the range. I'm looking for an equation that has A, V, T, and D in it. <gasps> Which one?
I agree. Oh, but you know what? I can cancel out the half AT squared again? Oh, this is like Christmas in September. You mean it's just VIT and the plus a half AT squared just cancels because there's A is zero? Now, I can't remember if I said this already. Courtney, the most common error that kids do is they say, I don't know what the acceleration is. They forget that it's zero. And so you know what they put there instead? A vertical into a horizontal equation. Don't do that. Right? The whole point of the vector math that we've done is for also us to realize verticals can't go into horizontals and vice versa. Uh, the range is going to be initial velocity, 81.9, times 11.7. Well, 80 times 12 would be 8 times 12 is, can I carry the, I don't know. What is it? 958 units, meters. Nine hundred and fifty eight meters. Sorry? You know what? It probably depends whether you use the eleven point seven or whether you kept the full decimal. Yep, and I, I when I mark these I take both. By the way, yours I like yours better. I never round off. You guys have cal uh, calculators that will store answers. Do that. Why round off and then use that to find an answer that's now wrong? Turn the page. Cliffs are where we're going to begin next class. We're going to pause here. But right now, here are the questions that you're capable of doing. Now, I'm going to be assigning more questions than just this from this exercise. But for now, you can do number one horizontally off a cliff. There's four different questions to try with different VIs and different heights. And you can do at an angle from the ground to the ground. Can't do number three yet. Four, five, and six are still a bit tricky. As is seven and eight. I haven't talked about number 10, but see if you can figure it out. If not, I'll be doing an actual example of it next lesson or the lesson after. And number 11. So I assigned right now 1, 2, 10, 11. Okay? 